Okay, so hello 2A. Uh, let's go ahead and do a shout out to reddit.com our gun deals, reddit.com our gun deals FU, which is gun deals follow up. Um, that's a nice little subreddit where after you find a good deal on a firearm, ammunition, parts, pieces, whatever it may have you, um, you can go post your follow up experiences there. Uh, also like to shout out the subreddit FN underscore Herstal. Um, cool little FN specific subreddit and that is the topic of our video today. Um, I might have to re-record this later. It is almost 10 o'clock and it is a local state holiday. It's a Monday night and people are setting off fireworks. Um, I actually should be in bed already, but kind of a night owl, and this is kind of when I start getting all of the ideas in my head. So anyways, let's jump right into it. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing um, one of my previous purchases. I've had this for quite some time, and this is actually my second um, FN gun of the same style. So let's go ahead and open it up, and I'll show you what it is. So, this is my FN 5.7. Um, it fires the 5.7 by 28 millimeter cartridge. Uh, it is manufactured by FN Herzl USA. Um, let's just go ahead and get a quick look at the gun. I apologize for all the pops and stuff like that. You know what? Um, this isn't actually the 4th of July. This is a state holiday. It's just an excuse for people to launch off a million fireworks and hey, have at it, I guess. It's freaking the heck out of my dogs, but uh, they'll get over it. So, let's go ahead and take a look here. If I can get it to zoom. Oh, goodness. We are going to be bitter enemies, camera. All right, there we go. FNH USA, Fredericksburg, Virginia, 5.7, caliber 5.7 by 28. All right. So um, I had originally purchased this gun quite some time ago, actually. Um, I would say four and a half, five years ago. Um, it's way before we ever moved into my house. I think it was actually right after my wife and I first got married. But that was the um, FN 5.7 Mark I that I had purchased, and I, uh, I loved it. I love that gun to death. I love this gun to death. Um, and what had happened is the, the tragedy in Sandy Hook, and um, at the time, I wasn't making a whole lot of money. We, my wife and I were kind of just establishing our lives as adults. Um, buying furniture, all that kinds of good stuff. I still was going shooting just as much as I am now. Uh, the problem was people were hoarding ammo. People are still hoarding ammo, but people were intentionally purchasing 5.7 by 28 millimeter ammo because this has always been one of the guns um, on the potential Brady Bill ban. Uh, it's been given the name cop killer despite no known reports of ever actually being used in a gunfight or with police or police altercations or killing a cop. Um, I find it highly unlikely that a criminal is going to get their hands on uh, an $1,100 piece of hardware and go out and shoot a cop with it. It just doesn't seem likely. Um, I mean... Maybe if they get a stolen one. Anyways, it, it it's nonsense. It's nonsense is what it is. Um, it's an awesome weapon for plinking, for, you know, target shooting, for self-defense. I, I do have a holster that I conceal carry this with, and I also open carry it. Um, it it's just an awesome gun. And the problem was, the at the time, ammunition was being hoarded up. And instead of it being around 20 to $23 a box, depending on which type of ammunition you were buying, uh, retailers were selling it for close to $30 a box. People at the retailers and you know people who were able to camp out and get it really early were buying it in as much as they could and then trying to turn around and flip it online um, for 
hell, almost $50 a box. Uh, I'm not going to pay a dollar a round for what essentially is a slightly larger 22. I know there is a huge difference between the casings, the projectiles, everything like that. But I mean, you know, I'm a realist. It's, it's, it's an awesome gun. It's an awesome cartridge, but I, I'm not going to pay a dollar a round. So I took the opportunity, um, someone who was panic purchasing, I put it up. I said, Hey, I'm open to offers. Someone bought it off me for $600 more than what I paid for it. Um, and then guess what? I went and bought this like two days later at, <laughs> at the store. Cause it was in back. I asked if they had one. They said, yes, it was the Mark II. I said, awesome. So there we go. I don't know. I just rambled. Maybe I'll edit all that out. Probably won't. I don't know how to do editing yet. I'm going to look into it. But one of the first things is right off the bat, the difference between the Mark one and the Mark two, and this is me purely going off of memory here. So I apologize if this is completely inaccurate, but I'm going off memory, but a big difference between the Mark one and the Mark two is right here where the barrel comes together, um, or not the barrel, but the slide rather. Um, on the Mark I, this was actually uh, connected in the shop. It was two different pieces that they, uh, that they uh, I'm not gonna say forged together or welded together, because I don't know actually what process they were using. Um, I'm not too intimate with those details. But however they were connecting them, it was two pieces, and I guess at some point, I had never heard of it until after I researched the Mark II, but I guess some people did have critical failures right here where the two pieces were conjoined and they were actually getting critical failures where these were separating uh, during the combustion in the chamber. Um, hopefully nobody got hurt. I didn't hear of anybody getting hurt, but that was that was supposed to be a big upgrade between the Mark I and the Mark II. Um, also, I did have to get rid of the holster that I had when I had the Mark I and upgraded to the Mark II uh, because the Mark II is thicker. Um, not by much, but enough that the holster didn't fit. Um, luckily, I found a nice holster manufacturer. Uh, they're called Comfort Holsters. Just shout out to them as well. Uh, I really, really like that holster that I got from them. Um, so check them out if you're ever interested. They were a little pricey. I did pick up uh, one of their, I want to say it's the Bentley holster. Uh, it's a, it's a super awesome concealed carry holster. It's inside the waistband. Um, so if you ever get a chance, check them out, maybe wait for a Christmas sale or Hey, email them, see if they've got any sales coming up. That'd be pretty cool. So anyways, um, I guess first things let's go ahead and drop that. Um, you know, I'm just realizing how I should have my tripod set up. Let's see if I can do this. Nothing in there. So I'm gonna go ahead, I can't get a great angle on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set that down. Lock it back, there we go. That way you can tell it's clear. And hey, look at that. You can see the sweat on it because my hands get sweaty when I'm recording. Get a little nervous. That's okay. So anyways, we are free and clear. Um, the magazine that I did have in there was free and clear. I know a lot of people are really uptight about that on YouTube. And of course, it is important for gun safety. So uh, let's just do a quick run over of what comes in the case. So of course, we got the 5.7. Um, this is the Bitone Flat Dark Earth black slide. Um, it does come with a front mounted rail. Um, what is really cool is the safety on this. It's the, um, oh, I don't know, I want to call it the snout safety. That's what I call it, the snout safety. It's right where your finger is and it's ambidextrous. Um, so I, I really do think that's cool that you can, you can activate the safety on and off with your dominant hand and your off hand um, and the slide lock is not ambidextrous I don't know I was about to say that but it is not so this is a right-handed and then we've got the mag magazine release right here um, I do like the grip on these um, 
I know some people do like to wrap their guns. They like to do stipling. They like to do different things. Um, but I actually, for someone who does, I just mentioned, I've got sweaty hands. For someone who does have sweaty hands, and I did just recently start wearing mechanics gloves while I'm shooting, um, which I found I like a lot better. But I do enjoy the grip on this gun. Um, it's, it's not too rigid. It's not too sharp. Um, doesn't hurt your hand after shooting. This gun doesn't have much of a recoil anyways, so um, not much to say there for hurting your hand. And then we'll set that off to the side and we'll come back to that. So they do come with all plastic mags, except for obviously the spring in there. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to say that it's steel from the last time I looked it up. Um, but it is nice. They are 20 round magazines. They come directly from F and H. Um, and you do get three of them, which is awesome. Uh, you also get what I like. I, I like this case. Um, it, some people might think it's a little tacky or a little gaudy. I could understand that. Uh, it, it is um, a soft plastic on the inside and then a harder plastic on the outside. Um, but you do get three magazines with it. I've got one here loaded with the uh, American Eagle loads. Um, you can usually find those for a pretty good price on PSA, Palmetto State Armory. Um, they've made shooting this gun affordable, so thank you to Palmetto State Armory for actually being reasonable about ammo prices. I can still go to my local gun shop, shops, I should say, my local gun shops, and it's not uncommon to see them have boxes of American Eagle, which isn't even, uh, you know, the FN ammo, uh, $26, $27 a box. That's ridiculous. That's, you know, nearly right around 50 cents a round. And that, that's just, that's craziness. So you do get, you do get three magazines. They are 20 magazines and then you got plus one in the chamber. Uh, when you load it up that way. I know most of you probably do. Uh, of course, you get all your cool literature with it. Auto-loading pistols owner manual. You get your registration card. So, I do suggest going through and reading your manuals. I know a lot of us are gun enthusiasts. We've been shooting almost our entire lives. I know I've been shooting since, how oh, I was six or seven years old I got my first gun when I was eight and we feel like we know what we're doing but it, it is always a good idea to review the literature on your firearms when you pick them up that way you know what you're getting you know what to expect out of it you know what the manufacturer expects out of you as the owner and what you should expect from their product um, a lot of times you'll see interesting notes and cautions in there uh, of do's and don'ts so that that's always good plus it makes sure that in case there are any do's or don'ts you're not going to invalidate your warranty which let's face it that's important um, because mistakes failures do happen um, obviously it does come with the federally mandated uh, trigger guard or cable lock I still got that in the case. Um, I don't really use that. I, I keep my guns locked up somewhere separately. I do have the brass that the the, the test brass that it was fired with. Um, it's pretty cool, you know. For for someone who's bought quite a few um, brand new guns, FN actually went to pretty great lengths to show you, you know, who tested it. Um, where it was tested, their, the model number, the tester, um, all the information. So I, I dig that. Um, it, it's cool to know that there's a good quality control going behind a product that you're spending quite a bit of money for. So let's talk about price. Um, I did buy this, I think, um, this Mark II. Cow. I want to say it was three or four months after the Sandy Hook tragedy. Um, so it was right around then. And it's just because someone was willing to pay me a lot more money than what I paid for my Mark I. And the Mark II was available. 
So just wanted to do a quick little review and unboxing. I know this hasn't been quick by any means. This is, we're going on 15 minutes now. But I'll, I'll tell you what, guys. Um, this is a blast. Uh, it's, it's a really fun gun. You do get people talking to you at the range, which, hey, some people aren't into that. Some people are. I, I, I love going into the range and shooting and, you know, hey, what are you shooting? Hey, what are you shooting? You know, getting to know other people. You meet some cool friends. Um, a lot of times people ask me, hey, what's that you're shooting? Because this thing, you know, it... it it kicks like a Pomeranian and it barks like a pit bull. It's, it's really, really loud and it puts out a huge fireball. Um, so people generally don't know what it is right off the bat. And I'm, I'm always more than willing to, to let people check it out, shoot it, um, put a few rounds through it. And you know what? Usually they reciprocate and I get to check out whatever cool guns they have that I've never shot or seen before. So, you know, um, hey. <laughs> why not you know why not get to know people at your local gun range we're, we're all part of the same team same club um we're all firearm enthusiasts as long as we keep it safe keep it cool um I, you know i dig it so um i'll probably do a shooting review on this uh when i do go do my shooting review for the peak performance ammo i haven't been able to take that out yet um like i said i did get a bunch of ammo from palmetto state armory uh, no, I didn't get any deal or anything special from them. Just so you guys know, that's not a paid sponsor or paid advertisement. I am just actually thankful that they are reasonable about their prices for their five, seven ammunition, because it, it, it's seriously ridiculous out there. How much people will expect you to pay for a specialty round. Um, so love this gun. Uh, just a quick thing here. This is the official FNH ammunition. This is the SS197 SR sporting cartridge. This is the Horn DV Max. I made sure to go ahead and, well, you know what? I didn't do a very good job opening these before I did it. So let's just go ahead and tear into it. Why don't we? And I do promise I'm trying to work on a tripod setup. I think I'm gonna have to get one of those little gorilla arm things or something like that. Um, so, here it is, nice and tiny, look at that. This is actually a rifle cartridge as well. Um, for those of you who do know, the FN57 is the sister pistol to the PS90, which is the civilian version, or the P90, um, the military version. It is a bullpup uh, rifle, um, top loading, holds up to 50 rounds, and it shoots the same cartridge. Uh, really interesting firearm if you've never seen it before I suggest you check him out uh, you know who has a cool video on that Jerry Michalek uh, that's M-I-C-U-L-E-K Jerry Michalek he is a competition speed shooter and he did a pretty cool video on the PS90 um, so check him out and I think FPS Russia also did one. Maybe he dual wielded it. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. But anyways, these are the these are the rounds. Um, they're not too big. Like I said, it's 5.7 by 28 millimeters, so slightly larger than a 22 caliber rifle, long rifle uh, projectile. The casing obviously is quite a bit bigger. You're getting more powder in there, so you do get a higher velocity, flatter trajectory. Um, impact and I've seen some videos some very cool videos on YouTube of people testing these in ballistics gelatin and um, different levels of body armor and AR 500 plate steel plating and man these things kick butt for for how small they are they are an amazing round and just I, I'm kind of a homer for the 5.7 I, I think they're really cool I, I've been into them for quite a while but like I said, this is the sporting projectile, so it's got this plastic tip on it. Um, you know, I honestly don't know a lot about ballistics, so I'm not sure uh, what the plastic tip does on this. Um, maybe it's just for stabilizing it in flight and to cut down on uh, projectile costs, not having to do uh, 
a full metal jacket over the entire thing. I'm not really sure. But I do like shooting these um, a little bit better. They feel better in the pistol, and I feel like my accuracy is a little more on point shooting these. Um, so let's see if we can do a little bit better breaking into this box. Probably not. Oh, hey, look at that, actually. Cool. Their box is... Oop. I almost spill them all right onto the counter. So this is American Eagle. Um, hey, look at that. FNH USA e-store has your 5.7 by 28 millimeter apparel on sale. Cool. If you're interested in that, if you're a 5.7 or a PS90 enthusiast, that might be cool. I'll actually have to check that out when I go to bed. So this is the American Eagle 5.7 by 28 millimeter. Um, let's see if we can get a shot of the box here and not spill it everywhere. How about that? So same thing, Palmetto State Armory. I think I picked this up off of there um, for the same price that I paid for the FN stuff, which is awesome. Uh, I just think the FN stuff wasn't in stock when I ordered this. So this is a 40 grain full metal jacket round. Um, doesn't have the plastic tip on the top of it, but that's fine. These are these are great just for taking out and plinking. Um, I do have there's those fireworks again. I do have some other uh, five seven ammunition. Um, it's some of the older SS one ninety five stuff. I paid a little bit more for it, but I, I'm holding on to that. Um, I don't know for a special day. But there is also a store online. I believe they are called Elite Ammunition, and they actually make custom hand loads for the 5.7 and the PS90. Uh, it's a little bit pricey. That is something I'm looking forward to buying and trying out. Um, you know, if I have that site wrong, I do apologize to them, but I think it's Elite Ammunition, so I'm going to go ahead and give them a try at some point when I get a little bit more money. But uh, yeah, you know, if you hey, if you get a chance. Um, and, and, you know, you can either rent one of these or you know someone who has them. Um, give it a shot. These these guns are a blast to shoot. I, I really love them. I also think Hickok45 does have a video of this as well. And, you know, I, he, I think he's got a video on everything. Um, one last thing. Adjustable sights. We do have rear adjustable sights. Fixed front iron sight on there. Um, I really haven't had to mess with them. These are not glow-in-the-dark, just white. Um, that would be something I'd like to do is get some uh, night sights for this but hey uh, hopefully this review was enjoyable um, I apologize for the fireworks and all the loud noise and the cruddy camera work these are my earlier videos well what I'm calling my earlier videos the plan is to keep the channel going as long as I can I am enjoying making these it's kinda like a little Zen time for me just to sit down here by myself talk to you guys and, you know, hopefully you get something out of it as much as I'm, you know, getting out of it, putting into it, if that makes sense. Uh, I, I, I do enjoy doing this. I've, I've been having a lot of fun just for the three videos. Well, this will be my third video now. Um, and if you have any requests, let me know um, in the comments. Right now, I've got a Sentry Arms Catamount Fury. Uh, one, that's a semi-automatic AK-47 Saiga clone. Uh, well, it's a 12-gauge Saiga clone. Uh, I did pick up a new Ruger 10-22. Uh, well, not new, used. Got that from the pawn shop. I'm a pawn shop junkie, just so you guys know. Uh, do have a uh, 1938 Soviet surplus Mosin Nagant. Uh, matching serial numbers. Love that thing. Um... We'll do a review of the XDM uh, 9mm 3.8. Uh, what else? Uh, the Smith & Wesson M&P Sport AR-15. Uh, we'll do a review of that too. So if you've got any in particular order, I think I've got like three subscribers. So call it out and <laughs> if, if you ask for it, I'll, I'll probably do it because there's like three of you right now. So let me know and I'd love to do it. Um, if there's anything you're curious about or anything you'd like to see a video on, let me know. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to do research and do some reading and see if I can put out an interesting video that maybe someone hasn't done yet or maybe it's something that you'd like to see. So let me know and I'd, uh, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks for watching guys and we will catch you next time.